All right, we are live. Let's make sure it's going across to the old YouTubesville and on Twitter. Let's see here. Live in five. It's probably going to give me some double audio, but we'll make sure. Okay, cool. Yeah, seems good. Uh, let me know in the chat if you can see me and hear me okay. Um, actually, it doesn't look like you can see me. Why can't you see me? That's just me. <laughs> uh, cool. Update system audio. No, system audio should be okay. Where's my little corner view? I haven't, um, yeah, I haven't done that. There we go. I haven't done this since I did the pairing with Frake, and so I bet you the my little off-screen thing is not not here. So give me just a second. Let's get the audio up in the corner. Um, yeah, you can see my screen, and you can see, but uh, my little video is probably not in the corner, right? Or at least I don't see it on my side. Uh, so let's always forget how to do that in this app. Camera, camera. Yes, yes, yes. Show picture and picture above overlays. Shouldn't have changed any of that. Show scenes, default scene. There we go. Let's add. No, I don't want another scene. That's not right. Yeah, no corner cam. That's, that's what I'm trying to figure out. Just don't show me that again. Update it. I don't care. Install later. <laughs> so many questions. Um, let's see. How can I get... How can I get my other source? That's lame. Uh, give me just another second here, and if not, we'll just go without it. Uh, show entire screen. That's good. Let's, nope, not zoom in. Don't want to do that. There we go. That's the entire screen. So that's corrected. There's the chat. How do I put this <laughs> in the corner? It's so... So many buttons. Yeah, see the camera's not it's like it's not enabled or something. It's very strange. Uh camera, yeah, built in. That's me. Full on me. We don't want to see that. It just did an update, so I'm wondering if if like something in the update killed it. Press the Edit Scene button and select Web Source Cam in the source list. Edit Scene. I don't know where the Edit Scene button is. It's overlays. Nope. Camera effects. Nope. Yeah, there's no Edit Scene button. I don't know where that is. Uh, anyway, okay, well, not really, not really worth messing with anymore. Um, yeah, show scenes plus, yeah, okay, we'll just, whatever, video. How can I show this in the corner? <laughs> Drag and drop, nope, that's not going to work. Copy, nope, not going to work. So many issues. All right, yeah. I don't really care anymore. Anyway, okay, we'll just, we'll move forward. Oh, look, I'm in the corner now. That's weird, and I'm getting this button, even though I said don't show me again. Hey, there we go. Okay, I have no idea how that got moved away. Let's make it a little smaller. Or you know what? Let's go round. That's fun. Hey, look at me, round. <laughs> okay, good enough. Let's try round today. All right, sorry about that. That was like totally annoying. I guess I should have checked that before, but it's always just worked. Okay, cool. Good enough. Let's jump in. Um, oh, I really like the new GitHub layout, by the way, except...
for this, like on the wide screen, that's really annoying that that's like all the way off to the right um, or left, I guess. So anyway, just thought that was kind of, I don't know, I'm used to being kind of like right above container ratio. So who knows, maybe that's something they'll, they'll tweak. Um, okay, so this one's been floating out here for a long time. Um, so I'm not going to mess with that today, but I would like to mess with this one because, uh, yeah, I kind of forgot about it a, a little bit ago. And um, they basically said that everything's working except for it doesn't add the notifiable trait to the referenced model. Um, so that's that's actually an interesting point and probably not something that's preventing it from merging. So I think what I would like to do is just kind of Let's review this PR real quick together. It's a new feature, so, and then we'll jump into the other stuff. Hey everyone, yeah, thanks for joining. Uh, yeah, sorry again about the video intro. Hopefully we're all smooth now. Um, okay, so, if the statement is notification, send statement type notification with facade. So it looked like they just kind of got rid of magic strings and introduced some kind of constant. Um, then they're going to import the notification facade, and they're going to import the notification itself. Otherwise, if it's mail, they're going to do the mail stuff. So yeah, magic constants, magic constants, I'm all good with that. Um, normally in these scenarios, I actually like to do just like an in array. Um, I'm not a big fan of like broken down double logic on the same thing, so I may clean that up. Um, <clears throat> What's interesting is that, oh, there's two different types. I see. There's a notification with facade and notification with model. Interesting. Okay. So, yeah, they're kind of doing the same logic here. So, the fact that they're even doing this here kind of lets me, lets me know that we can actually say, like, is notification, like, statement is notification. And we could, that would give us this. So, that's a nice little refactor we could do after, afterwards. Uh, so what are they doing here? So if there is data, then we make a function. So this is for the test. That makes sense. And then if there's a two, it's it has two. Okay, cool. So notify is the new syntax. So we're basically, long story short, this PR, we opened it up to that if you said like send whatever mail, then it would be a mailable. And if you said like send whatever alert notification, you would get uh, the notification, you would get a notification instead of a mailable generated. Uh, but we thought, you know, that's nice and everything, but it's also one of those things where, uh, you know, somebody might strictly want to have a not notification. Uh, so we have this new notify uh, keyword. Uh, and so you can now say notify, and that's going to generate a, uh, a notification instead. So all those codes really just doing that. Um, they're extracting all the tokens here. I guess with is a requirement. I'm not sure. Again, we could we could optimize this after the fact, but let's let's keep going. So this is just the output. So yeah, what I'd like to see are some test cases with some of these yeah some of these draft files. So let's take a look at those. I trust that it's all passing because the build's passing. Yeah. Okay. So let's take a look at this. Um. So the new syntax would be notify user.email, so who you're notifying, and then the actual notification class you want to send slash generate, and then what you want to send it with. And then, of course, there's just send the whole user, and publish post notification, and with is not required. Okay, so I'm, I'm, I'm pretty much okay with this syntax. It's not... Um, I think there's probably opportunity for you to streamline it, but yeah, I mean, it's not, it's not like bad or anything. So um, yeah, this is pretty good. So let's merge this and then let's make those few little refactors that I mentioned um, just after the fact. So I'm gonna squash merge. I like to squash merge on these PRs because you know, sometimes people have just a lot of different things or they merge master or all these different stuff. This is pretty clean in fairness, but uh, you know, sometimes it's not always the case. Okay, cool. So we got a new feature. It's on master. It's untagged. Uh, so hopefully by the end of this uh, stream, we'll tag everything. So 
Hey, you're on. Hopefully I said that right. Uh, sorry, I had the chat lowered. Uh, okay, let's get out to Blueprints, Bill. There it is. And let's close all this down. And let's, whoops, let's clear this out and go to Blueprint. Blueprint. There we go. Git pull. And we'll bring everything down. And I like to just run, not illuminate, <laughs> vendor bin PHP unit. Let's just make sure everything's green. And it is. Okay, and we're going to do those quick little refactors just for fun. Um, again, nothing wrong with what was contributed, uh, but just an opportunity to kind of better understand and clean those up. So let's go to a sin statement. And here are these different casts. So we'll just kind of tighten those up a little bit. And I'm just going to find where these are used to go and find that little opportunity for a refactor. Uh, so I think it was one of these not equals. Yeah, so I just, this statement's like super, super dense to me. Um, so there's just an opportunity to basically say like something like a statement um, is notification. And we can take the same stuff and we'll actually, it looks like we actually want to say Hmm. Notification generator. We're kind of filtering these, which is interesting. So let's just say not is notification. Yeah, I'm kind of curious what that was. But yeah, let's go back and put it in the send statement. Did they make another notification? Whoops. Did they make another one of these? Oh, that's on the right. No, so everything's going through send statement. So yeah, okay. So let's just add a little helpful method. We'll put it above all these privates since it's public. I'll just dump it up here. And we'll say, uh, whoops, let's undump that for a second. So I think you can do like pub func or something, public function, or it's like pf. What are the shorthands? It's like pif. I'm trying to learn some of the fancy smart templates in PHP Storm, but anyways, public function function can't type today um, is notification, and we'll basically just return uh, this type is equal equal to that, or uh, this type is equal equal to that. And I'm fine with this denser one here because it's abstracted into an aptly named method that kind of lets us know what's going on. So really as a reader of it, like a future reader of this code, you're, you're never going to have to go like this low um, to kind of see what's going on. You're just going to see what, what does it mean to be his notification? Oh, the type's this or this. Cool. So I just like breaking things up that way. Now the original thing here was actually, uh, whoops, if we go back or if we go back and kind of look at it here, we can see that it was basically statement is not equal and it's not that type. So if we De Morgan's that, which which is what we invert it, it would basically be not statement type is equal to the facade or it's equal to the with model. So let's just make sure we have that logic correct, and we do. So we kind of just De Morgan's it by putting that in front of it. So let's run our test again and make sure we're still green and we're not. I broke something. Call to undefined method statements is notification on, okay. Is notification. I broke you somehow. Did I not type that right? Is notification. Yeah, I totally missed an I. Let's try that again. This is why you have tests and it's all green. Cool. Uh, what do I have a typo on? Oh, you're right, I do. I'm actually lucking out in that case, Adrian. Good call, good spot. I do want to keep that consistent, but um, since I'm within the class, I actually got away with it. Uh, but yeah, good catch. Definitely want to keep that uh, keep that accessed here. I think that's something that um, Kent Beck talked about in like his implementation patterns. You know, he some people do all property access within the class, and some people do always the other methods. I'm in the kind of like always call the methods um, camp just because you never know if one of those methods is doing something. Not that they should in some cases have side effects, but again, um, even within the class, I, I rarely do direct property 
um, access. So, and yes, you're right. Uh, we don't have any failing tests, but yeah, we should we should keep this strict. That's the whole point. Cool. So we definitely clean this up. Good mob programming there. Thank you. And there's probably another opportunity. I feel like the double continues is a little weird, but I'll, I'll leave it alone. Um, I thought we were following Laravel syntax. So we'll see what happens when I push this up. And then last thing I want to do um, is there was another place where we were doing this. So let's go check this out. So see, we're doing the exact same thing here now. So we can just say is notification. Get that nice and tight all in one line. Awesome. And let's see anywhere else we're doing this. So we're just returning it there, no problem. This is a straight check for that very specific type, so that's fine. And then we actually have it in our sin statement. So I think I think that's a good little refactor. Yeah, but we will drop in a min with an array. Um, yeah, you're right. Originally I said I like using an array. Um, I'm okay probably leaving this since it's already kind of squashed down. But, or squash down or push down into the class. It's kind of the lowest level it can get. So I'm okay with this being a little dense, kind of like I mentioned earlier, because uh, you're probably not going to come this far into the code. Uh, but yeah, at higher levels, I definitely, I don't know if this class will have one, but you can definitely see I'm, I'm more in the capacity at a higher level of the code to use that in array. I don't say action equal equal edit, action equal equal, you know, update, show, blah, 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 blah. That would be a huge statement. So that's kind of why I like in array sometimes. Okay, I think we're still passing, so we'll call this done, git add dash p. Uh, yep, so we just did, again, we, we just kind of factored that down into something a bit more readable. Uh, same thing here. And then just some tiny little uh, cleanup there in the formatting, and then our new is notification function. Cool. So uh, git commit dash m, uh, we'll just call this um, Base coding. <laughs> I used to say boy scouting, but, uh, you know, with everything going on, like, you know, that's not a super accurate term. I mean, you know, you could, you could be all sorts of scouting of any kind. And then I kind of realized, you know what, all these, all these, you know, old school boy scouting things uh, that I used to name that way, uh, were all kind of put into base code. So now I say base coding. <laughs> uh, so yeah, we'll just push this directly to master. Uh, everything's passing. And just, just for clarity, um, Let's go to my blog post. I'll, I wrote this a while back. Yeah, are you a Boy Scout? Um, so anyways, this is something I picked up from an old coworker, uh, Boy Scouting. And again, a, a lot of these things actually in this original article, you know, five, five years ago now, over five years ago, uh, just kind of talked about, you know, a practice that we had as a, as a team, this Boy Scouting commits. Um, but basically they meant things like eliminating dead code, removing comments, standardizing the format, all things that eventually, several years later became base code. So again, now I just say base coding, uh, which is all these practices um, that we've seen here. So formatting, dead code, nested code, uh, you know, removing comments, all that kind of stuff. So base coding it is. All right, let's go pick up some bugs. So that's all good. Okay, notification should generate a uh, assert sent to. Um, I think we said this is fixed now in that PR. Um, but we should probably test it out. So let's do that. Let's go to, hey, Daryl, what's up? Let's go to Turbo Zonda, I think it was. Why isn't that there? Yeah, better than commits like fix white space. Yeah, they're, I don't know. You know, it's fun. It's It's not... Yeah, I mean, they're not super descriptive, but where, where's my Turbo Zonda repo? What is going on here? Not TurboTax, <laughs> Turbo Zonda. There we go. Did my taxes recently. All right, let's pull this down. This is just kind of a little repo I use for like my workshops and demonstration purposes, but I think it's got some good stuff in here. Um, to be able to, to mess with blueprint. So let's just do a git checkout dash B on blueprint and let's that'd be a good opportunity to follow the docs and make sure that this all works the way we want it to. So let's go into the blueprint docs. Let's actually go back because we're gonna want this draft file and we'll get started installation and let's bring in master and we'll make 
make sure that's the right commit. So commit uh, A46BB. All right, so we should see Composer pull that down. I just want to make sure we have the latest code since I haven't tagged it yet. I ran late on time. I'm drinking my coffee directly from the pour. <laughs> kind of a goof. It's kind of a goofy day. Uh, all right. Oh, it's installing everything, of course. Yeah, because I just cloned it. All right, I think we're there now. Let's go back. And we shouldn't need that anymore. Let's copy this. And we'll do a pb paste into draft.yaml. And uh, PHP Artisan Blueprint build. All right, and let's go check out this controller. So cat. Assert sent to post author review class notification use post. Post is the post. Look at that. Man, sometimes I'm impressed by this stuff. I got to be honest. Again, goofy day, but uh, man, that's awesome. Okay, cool. I'm going to say that this is fixed. Uh, so fixed in uh, 253. Thanks at Predator. Close and comment. Nice. Okay, good. There we go. Already squashed a bug. Okay, so the next bug, the, these next two bugs are actually, they've been floating out for a while, and, uh, you know, I think one of them we're going to try to fix, and one of them we're probably going to say, you know what, it's fine. So, let's check this out. Running blueprint trace on an existing project with an enum data type on one of the columns in an existing table throws in an exception. Okay, long story short, throws an exception. Um... Okay, so what's the quickest thing we could do? The quickest thing we could do is fire up MySQL and see if this works or not. They have a workaround. Let's see what their workaround is. I was able to run trace after altering the column to, well, yeah, that's, that's not good. I mean, we should be able to support enums, I would think. I mean, we generate enums, so... Oh, thanks, Lee. Yeah, the docs are actually, um, just want to give due credit, these are actually a Titan Jigsaw. It's like they're straight up, um, it's their static site generator, it's open source. Uh, but they actually have a, um, they actually have a couple um, templates, starter templates, and the one I'm using is, is like their documentation starter template. So, uh, very, very uh, due credit to them. Uh, so, anyway. Uh, Debal doesn't. Okay. Yeah, what do you all know in the chat? It's a doctrine issue. Yes, I think you're right. I actually worked on this with the model factory generator. That's probably too generic. Let's do Laravel. There it is. I worked on this with uh, on Marcel's package, actually. Somebody contributed an enum type for doctrine. I'm wondering if we could I'm wondering if we could leverage this somehow. Um I'm wondering if we could leverage this somehow. I don't know if this is worth tackling today, to be honest. But I mean at the same time it's all port it's all part of the it's all part of the live stream. I mean, the goal is to squash bugs. This is the next bug in the list. Okay, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna give this we're gonna give this 15 minutes and kind of see where we get. And for those of you in the chat, um, Adrian Yost, uh, if you all know something I don't, which is probably fair, uh, do let me know. But let's let's do this. I'm gonna fire up Docker reluctantly because. It's probably going to make my machine take off, but let's kind of see. Let's kind of see this break and see how quickly we can we can hack something uh, together. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take this. Or we're we're going to fire up Docker and we're going to take this little schema and 
let's go ahead and bring this up in Atom. The current Laravel version should support enum and even rename. So Laravel 7, you mean, should support. All right, I'm going to hack this post table out with messages as it was my PR fixing enum rename. Okay, so you're, Adrian, you're saying you committed something to, to Laravel, the Laravel framework itself that improves support for renaming enum columns. So you know Laravel itself supports enums. Okay, cool. Well, let's just, yeah, let's see this in action. Um, Cause yeah, technically Blueprint still supports six. And I'm perfectly willing, honestly, to say, look, um, enum supports added in Blueprint you know, blueprint with Laravel 7 or something. But let's just let's just kind of get a feel for it. Because if it straight up works for me right now, then I'll just close the issue and say that. Because I've, as the creator of Shift, I have no problem saying people should run the latest version of Laravel, which I, I, I believe it anyway. Um, so we've got this little bit now, and I think Docker's are running. So let's do Docker container PS, because I don't remember the name. And we'll do docker exec dash it bash. Let's go into turbo Zonda. Uh, do I have an env file? I do not. So let's copy dot env dot dev or dot. And let's do php artisan key generate because we'll need that. And then I'm also going to need Let's point this out a database real quick. So let's just call this turbo, turbo, Zonda dev. And I think locally I'm just db user and db pass, I think. And let's see here. Let's go into PHP my admin. It'll be easier. Let's just run this. And what do we call that? Turbo Zonda dev. So I'm just going to make, whoa, not clear. That's that's a bad placement for that button. Uh, yeah, okay, turbo's on it. There we go. All right, so we should be able to do PHP artisan migrate. Nope. Uh, turbo's on to dev. Maybe. Oh, I know what it is. I got the wrong host. I'm on Docker, so it's all just DB. There we go. Awesome. All right, it created post table. <laughs> I forgot to rename that. I just hacked the blueprint version. Uh, okay, so let's see here. We should have tables now and messages. Let's look at its structure. There we go, there's our little enum. Okay, so now I am looking for the command line because we want to run PHP artisan blueprint trace okay i got five models traced okay interesting so let's go see what blueprint traced it did not trace post accurately also why the hell is that called post oh because i've hacked again i hacked blueprint this should really be called messages or message sorry there we go and this isn't even this isn't even that accurate um i really don't need anything else in here to be honest i just need this this will be a more accurate trace traced four models okay so it didn't trace messages and it didn't oh because it's sorry this is what you get for trying to shortcut um shortcut it the migration instead of just generating the whole thing message there we go let's try this again there we go that's the answer okay so unknown database type enum requested mysql platform 8 so it's not just a 57 thing it's also 8 uh okay so this is an issue across this is across the board an issue so what I'd like to do now is just try to hack Blueprint in the vendor folder by seeing um, if we can register this enum type in a similar way as, as we did before. 
Um, so let's see if that is going to scale somehow. So somewhere in this code base, we made a little constant of enum. Um, this is wrong, but it also isn't important as we're not modifying the tables. Debal issue, yeah. So what is the debal issue? They just can't, they can't read like, you can steal it from my declined PR. Can you post that in the, in the notes and I'll go take a look at it? Um, let's look for enum in this repository. Yeah, here we go. So they, they add a custom, I don't even know if this is applicable to what we're doing, but they basically add a custom enum type. So debal can like read it. So let's go into the vendor folder and Laravel shift and source. We're just gonna hack this straight in the vendor folder and see if we can get it to work. So in the blueprint service provider, uh, probably in blueprint, probably there's the trace command to be honest. Let's just start with the trace command. So when we get into handle of the trace command, let's do a type, an add type, and let's get the proper imports. So that'll be dbal and enum. I'm just gonna copy these in one shot. Again, this is not pretty code. And this we'll just say is more like I'm just going to put it top level in blueprint for now. So blueprint enum type. All right. And let's go get that file that we were looking at a second ago. And Adrian, I'm, ah, oh, you did a Twitter team again. I don't want to go to Twitter. I just want to copy it from the chat. Uh, you guys are already complaining about seeing all my notes. Now you got to go see all my Twitter stuff. All right, let's, uh, in source of Blueprint, let's make a new file for enum type.php, and we'll paste this, and this needs to be Blueprint. Just Blueprint, no Blueprint types. Okay, so let's just kind of see what happens. Okay, unknown database type enum requested, okay. Interesting. Oh, you can't post links in chat. I think if you drop the HTTPS, you probably can, but that's okay. I'll, we'll, we'll go to Twitter. I'm already sharing all sorts of stuff anyway. Here you go. Cool. All right, let's see what you did here. Uh, so MySQL manager. All right. Yeah, see you're doing you're doing a new type and you've got an enum type. So that's what I, that's what I thought I did. Enum is enum. Register doctrine type mapping. That's interesting. Fluent type enum. Yeah, I just don't know enough about Doctrine's underlying code to kind of know exactly what all this is doing. Um, let's go back to this trace command. So what I've done is I've added a type, custom enum, and then I've pointed it at, I don't really know what that does. You have type and then method. What's method? Oh, override type and add type. Okay, so we're effectively calling the same thing. You call it enum. So I'm, we're, we're effectively doing the same stuff. Maybe this just can't be custom enum. Maybe it's gotta be enum or something. Let's see what happens. Unknown database type enum requested. You are fine with your added code, just register it. Um, just register it. Just, oh, okay, just register it. I gotcha. So where am I doing debal though? Is it lower? This app classes, 
relative class, translate columns. Okay, so it's probably down here somewhere. Okay, here we go. Extract columns. So this is where I'm pulling everything out. So really, this is probably where I need to do it. Okay. So we're kind of doing that all here. We already have schema. And then you register both. It's kind of interesting. Don't understand that. All right, well, let's, let's try this. Okay, so we're registering, we're getting database platform, and then we're registering the enum type. So let's pull this a little closer to home, and we'll see how far this gets us. I don't like working on PHP in Atom. Okay, so we're going to add our own enum type to that class that we stole uh, from the other project we've worked on, and then we're going to register it with Doctrine to say anytime you see an enum, use treat it like the enum type. I'm assuming that's what that does. Enum type already exists. Enum type already exists. So what do you have to do? Override type? Or you had a check for that, didn't you? You had a... Let's just see if we have type enum. DD. False. Interesting. Do we have to call that something else? So it doesn't have a type, which means I should be able to do add type. And then you do an enum class or a string class, and then you change, oh, you changed that, sorry, that's why we, you had the old one. Okay, so now enum's enum. Very strange. Type enum already exists. Did I, did I already, did I like not copy it? handle or something oh that's the test generator we're in the wrong thing I'm getting confused here we go um okay so we took it out of handle so we shouldn't have registered it already oh I wonder if extract columns gets called multiple times I bet you it does yeah it does it gets called in this forage loop that's why it's already there okay so what we can do is say let's just let's just hack this for a second. We'll say if it does not already have the type, whoops, then we're gonna register it. There we go. Let's do that. All right, traced five models. Let's see what it looks like now. All right, type string message long text. Okay, well, at least it traced it, in fairness. Um, what is it really, though? Message is really... Oh, we have a type. Okay. And what is type? Type is a string. Okay. So, enum type. Let's look at our code. Okay, so this this actually worked. It seems like, and obviously we need to clean up that code a little bit, but let's let's go back to this trace command and better understand what's going on here. Because my guess is it's now kind of a downstream thing. Um, that's what it is. It's a string. Enum equals text. Um, yes, that's true, but I would need to have Blueprint be smart enough to say, like, if it is an enum, try to go pull the you know, the options, um, the available options out of it. So um, that's what I want to do kind of next. So let's do this. Let's let's just dump these columns and kind of see what's going on. Because, yeah, I'm trying to figure out how I can better map it. Because I would like to map, if I'm tracing the model, I want it to be mapped correctly. So, So let's just, yeah, let's kind of see what comes back out the other side here, uh, just for post or message. Where are you, message? Oh, those aren't going to be listed. Crap. Uh, so it's just message. There we go. So name message type is text type. Interesting. 
Therefore, I modified all the other columns in my PR. Okay. Let's look at your PR one last time. Uh, look at the MySQL. Okay, MySQL schema. Is MySQL the only one that supports enum types? That's interesting. You have to override it too. I see. Hmm. It's interesting that it's interesting that you can override and add this type, but yeah, it's not like propagated propagated through to like I would have expected this type to say enum type, like blueprint enum type. Um that's what I would have liked. <laughs> uh not message, I think. Oh, you're right, it's type. Oh, it is blueprint type. Oh my god. Thank you. You're right. I was looking in the total wrong spot. Okay, so this is this is what we want. We just need we just need type now to to be able to do something with. So we have everything we need, I think. Um so let's keep going here. What do we do? We list the columns, we return those columns. Okay, so we're we we do not need to be here anymore. And this is kind of like this needs more work, which I may do offline, but we'll basically do like a cleanup on that. Okay, so let's go back to the top here. Um, I'm going to close the chat for a second because it's kind of in the way. Okay, so we translate the columns, which we were looking at a second ago. We map the columns, we extract the columns. Okay, so we were just looking in extract columns, right? Yes. And now we map columns. So let's go look at map columns. Map columns just collects collects those into an actual column. I got you. And this is where we would probably want to do a little more work. So I think in here, yeah, in the mappings, we would want to add like just enum goes to enum. And then here, we would probably want to, not columns, sorry. Or yes, columns. What's the default? I guess the default's probably like, yeah, see, look at that, to-do, enums and goods. <laughs> Great work. Um, okay, cool. I'm curious how it ends up as text. I guess it's just a default debal thing. So basically, we would want to say if type. What are we getting here? If an array type, type equals self. Okay, so let's do this. Let's just make our life easier. We'll say um, if, um, what is this really? This is column, this is column or key. Yeah, key would be the name. So if key is equal to type, then let's um, dump column and let's also dump type. I just want to see what these outputs are. Okay, so it's type becomes a string. Okay, so that's kind of, must just be like the default. And then we get all, everything else. Okay, so what would be nice curious what get type returns. I want to get access at I want to get access at blueprint enum. There we go. That's what I want. Okay, so basically we could say something now more like if whoops um column get type is instance whoops instance of enum type see if that works. It might be a string. No, it works. Okay, good. So let's just prove that just for giggles. Yay. Okay, good. So we're getting where we need to get. We can do this type comparison because this isn't going to work for us without doing more work anyways, according to, to Adrian, which I don't want to do. <laughs> so what I want to do now, though, is see if we can read out <clears throat> read out the options and I'm sure someone has a uh, 
fancy way to do that. Nuno's uh, layer stat goes over the migrations to know which underlying data types your columns are and then goes and checks if the types in your code matches. They circumvent hitting the database. Um, cool. Yeah, Yoast, if you, <clears throat> if you can find the line where maybe they're messing with enums, I would love not to have to write this code. Um, but until then, I want to look at what's already here. So set custom schema options allowed i'm assuming the allowed options are adrian uh, let me know in the chat but i'm assuming allowed options are what i'm interested in um yeah you get the actual underlying bit here so let's let's copy this for a second so um table column what's your table column you're passing in table column which is what? Array change key case. Um, array change key case. I've actually never seen that method before or function. Is that native? Wow. Nice. Learn something. Awesome. Uh, okay, anyway. Uh, you just pass in the table column. I'm assuming table column is is effectively more or less this, I'm assuming. So let's find out. Uh, okay, so what do you do here? You do replace enum with allowed option, okay. Treat it as a string, yeah. Return string of matched allowed options, fail. Uh, okay, so I don't want to return anything here, so let's just let's just make this a um, options and just kind of see. I fully expect this to explode, but let's just see. Let's see what we get here. I'm not sure what table column really is, so I think what I'm going to do is call this column column and we'll just kind of watch it explode. Cannot use object of type as an array. Okay, so let's go back and try to better understand what's going on here. Okay, so what is this? Somewhere in here, oh, did I scroll past it? Yeah. So what is this doing, Adrian? What is table column that you get? You can append dump on string. Yeah, okay. Uh, table column comment. Table column, table column. What is table column in relation to what we have? I'm trying to figure out what table column is compared to this. What in here gives me table column? Because you're referencing type, which is not, not something I'm familiar with. And obviously when we dump this, I can't just do get type replace. That's not gonna that's not gonna do it. How do I get this enum thing? Because it's definitely not in the output. Maybe it's underneath the type object. Go back at the file. That doesn't make any sense. Type. Look below what? Sorry, man. You're going to have to be more specific since we're not pairing up. Which file and look below what? I know you've done this before, so it's all in your brain, but I am, I am not familiar <laughs> with it. I can see what you're doing based on the code you have, but I'm not. We're just missing the piece of how to get how to get whatever string you got before that has this enum declaration from MySQL. I know it comes out in the dump, but I don't know how to get how to get to it. Um maybe it's maybe it's underneath type. Get type. That's just gonna return. We saw this already. This just returns a string. Yeah, that just returns one 
six whatever. It doesn't return anything fancy. So that's not helpful. Get portable table column definition. Okay, good. Uh, get portable, portable, there we go. All right. In MySQL manager, yep. Oh, okay, you've got an underscore version of it. Nice. Okay, so keys, array change. Yeah, see, you're still doing table column, and I don't know what table column is. I think that's I think that's the ultimate issue here, is um, you're getting something very different than what I get at this level. Uh, I don't I don't have an array of stuff. I have an object. I have the dbal column object. So I don't know how to make that an array that you're using in your code. So it's just not really one to one is the problem. It's close, but I just don't know how to map that. So um, yeah, I'll have to figure that out offline. I'm kind of I kind of over messing with this, and I think the back and forth isn't isn't uh, good video. So <laughs> let's uh, let's look at the other stuff um, that we have, and we'll come back to kind of this enum thing a little bit later. So I'm sure it's something simple, but uh, until we can get that dump out, it's just not it's not really very fruitful. So so yeah, once once we get that enum string that comes out with the SQL dump. We're going to be cooking with fire then. So I think this is something we can support. Let's go back and take a look at uh, some of the other stuff. So there's a lot of stuff real quick. I think maybe this is what I'll end on um, since we're approaching the hour is uh, a lot of things in here I've listed as community enhancements. Um, so anytime if you are interested in, in contributing uh, to Blueprint or whatnot, um, there's a lot of things that maybe I wouldn't really put into Blueprint myself, but it's necessarily, you know, it's something that others might think are helpful. And so in those cases, um, I kind of, excuse me, I kind of list those as community enhancement. So um, anything in here, you can see we're getting to a place where like all of these uh, things are, are stuff that maybe someday I'll get to, but um, I kind of am trying to encourage the community to, to work on those. So anything bugs or documentation oriented are definitely things uh, I would want to clean up and that's something I'm gonna continue to work on in these live streams. Uh, but in the meantime, if you're looking to contribute to Blueprint or have your own ideas on new features, um, you know, this is something that you can, uh, you can add to um, and I'll tag it and, and we'll kind of see who picks it up. So th this was a really good one actually, um, just the other week. Um, Dennis here uh, was actually talking about adding, you know, um, composite primary keys uh, or composite keys in general uh, for the um, for like your database indexes, whether they're unique or uh, an in a straight index or primary. So you can do all these uh, with Blueprint now, but not necessarily the composite. And he's actually underneath using Blueprint for uh, Draw SQL, which I thought was pretty cool um, to find out that for the migrations and so forth, he was. He was using that, uh, or using Blueprint to generate that that code underneath. So that's pretty cool. So I kind of encouraged him based on that to again, hey, go ahead and and you know see what you can do here. I don't think this particular syntax is going to work um, just because of those you know duplicate names. Uh, so we were kind of going back and forth on some other ideas, uh, but yeah, we'll see what he comes up with. So long story short, there um, definitely if you want to um, you know. If you have your own ideas, never be afraid to to kind of push them up. Um, I'm getting to a place again where I kind of leave all these open. I kind of used to close them saying, hey, um, you know, it's not something I really want to do with Blueprint because there's just, there's a really delicate balance with Blueprint of like having it generate the code and then having it generate all the code. And it was never really meant or designed or intended and it, had, it doesn't have the philosophy of generating everything. Um, the goal is really to generate enough uh, you know, so you can, you can do, um, you know, a pretty good amount of code generated scaffolding and then do the rest, um, you know, kind of like by hand or yourself normally, <laughs> right? So, uh, Blueprint's not a language all onto itself. Who knows, maybe someday, but that's kind of a line I have to draw sometimes. So I used to draw that line and close the PRs and say, ah, it's not something I want to do. And now I say, hey, look, if someone in the community wants to add it, uh, I'm willing to support it. So... Um, anyway, thank you all for uh, joining live. Uh, that one, I guess, was a bit haphazard, but uh, it's, I think it's good to see 
uh, you know, how you kind of muddle through and struggle through code. And this is pretty common for me, you know, especially something I'm not familiar with at all. Like, I don't really go and read the docs at first. I'll spend 15 or 20 minutes and just kind of try to hack at it like we were with some, you know, just simple little debugging with dumps and dies and var dumps and whatever and exits. Um, you know, I know there's all sorts of better tools and so forth out there, but, uh, you know, this is just proven proven to kind of work for me to help get me hacking. But now I know the questions I need to ask, which is, you know, hey, how do I get that that kind of, um, you know, schema or, or a string-based SQL of, of the definition for the enum column. So I'll figure that out offline. Again, uh, as noted in the chat, maybe Adrian can, can point me in the right direction there, uh, but definitely appreciate all the feedback and you all uh, joining live. So hopefully uh, see you all next week.